All right. Um, hello and welcome, everyone. My name is Jerry, and I am Microsoft MVP for Office Apps and Services. And with me today, uh, my, my name is Asad Afzal. I am a technology lead expert at Infosys. All right. So, um, you know, today we we are coming. We we decided to do this call uh, today because we it's been a week, and ever since this news came in. I was thinking about it and I talked to some of my customers as well. And the response I got was kind of pretty scary because everybody just thought, oh, this is a very short amount of time. So what it is, um, tell us what to do. So uh, as we know, uh, and last week Microsoft announced that uh, SharePoint 2010 workflows will be retired on basically um, August 1st. So, um, yeah. We thought that let's talk about it. Let's see what is the impact. So, so does that ahead. mean does that does that mean that we are going to have to get off 2010 workflows and move to 2013 or even Microsoft flows? That's right. correct. So we have to either go uh, upgrade all the. I would not call upgrade <laughs> because we have to create all the 2010 workflows we have to either a 2013 platform or to um basically Microsoft Power Automate. So it means we will be um, pointing them um, and see what are the options we have to upgrade them. First, I think before even we talk about it, um, we need to see the impact. How how many workflows we have um, I, and I how, think, it, how it, com complicated they are. I think one thing to, I mean, I think uh, to, to really differentiate between 2010 workflows and 2013 workflows. So I think in 2010 workflows, um, were obviously uh, you know created in 2010 were uh, SharePoint and they were built within the SharePoint engine. Mm -hmm. So you know and then 2013 workflows are actually a separate engine outside mm -hmm. of SharePoint. Yep. And 2010, uh, for example, the approval workflows that we use uh, or uses InfoPath in 2010 workflows, where 2013 approval workflows are done differently. Even if we try to upgrade, um, because what I'm trying to get at is that you know even if we need to upgrade, there will be a big change there. Um, from 2010 to 2013, since even the approvals are done a little differently in, in uh, 2010 versus 2013. I mean, where you know, do you do get approval uh, out of the box uh, workflow? But there is uh, in 2010, there's an info path associated with it versus what you have in SharePoint 2013 is completely out of the box um, approval workflow, actually. And you remember that that the most um, that we we a couple of projects that we worked together, we actually did the the 2010 workflow within Infopath in the custom form, yeah. and we customize the form, and we add that logic of, you know, having the various uh, outcomes in there, you know, accept, reject, assign it to someone else, or basically uh, inform someone, and then all that content type stuff where we create a custom content type and extended it. So yes, it, it's there plus approvals, um, and it was mostly used for approvals, but. Um, I have found that ever since people moved everything to Office uh, SharePoint Online, it becomes slower and slower. Um, I worked on a few projects where customer had a large um, workflow, and it was extremely slow. Um, there were nine or ten levels of task-based approvals, and I, I was seeing that when first task was completed, it was taking around two minutes before the next task coming up. And in the call calls, I was like getting feeling you know let's refresh and see if it comes back so and like we we switch the topic and then we see the task shows up and then we converted those to 2013 style approvals and it became extremely fast so um but you know let's move further so we we know that on august 1st microsoft will disable the 2010 workflow on any new tenants um, and the next thing is that on on november 1st microsoft will shut down um, at this moment, um, all the 2010 um, workflows mean the workflow service will be turned off. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the, in terms of the impact, so anybody who has built, used the out of the box uh, SharePoint workflows, uh, those workflows are not going to work. So the workflows that we actually enable by, by a feature uh, workflows, uh, you know, by default, the workflow and the SharePoint site for turned off. So once you enable this out of the box workflows feature, you get approvals, collect feedback, 
collect signatures, um, uh, you know, the three state workflow and, and of course the publishing approval workflow, the annoying one uh, where you publish a page and it says uh, a start a workflow and then you start a workflow and then you say I approve and then you say, okay, I approve again. So multiple levels. Um, so those workflows uh, will be disabled. Okay. Uh, that's another thing that we need to uh, figure out. Um, so, you know, what should be our next step? So the next step should be identification of um, how many workloads we have. So the, yeah, I, I what are our is, options? I mean, that is something I think so first thing that I'm, I'm going to start going and looking and, and doing uh, at my client is actually go ahead and, and try to, you know, figure out, you know, how many workflows that we are running on 20. 2010 and 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 other thing is that you know there's a third party tool if they're using any kind of uh, uh, workflow engine that is associated with 2010 I mean that's something we need to figure out so we we definitely want to know an easy way of of uh, of getting those workflows yeah yeah so especially like if you have uh, used Nintex workflow uh, and it yeah. uses some of the 2010 workflows in the back end or 2010 actions in the back end how what will be the impact on that again I have I'm not that much exposed to uh, third party tools for workflow but we'll see what the impact is and, and those customers, those companies will come back and tell us. One thing, one thing I will add here is regarding the, the Nintex is the Nintex 2010, 2013, um, on 20, 2013 uh, platform, we're using the old engine, which was 2010. They were building the workflow uh, on mm. 2010, but moving online, uh, what I've noticed and seen is that, um, that, that it is using 2013 uh, workflow engine. Now, obviously there's a third party, you know, I can't talk much about it, but I mean, that's mm. what is something that I have seen that it's using it. Sure. So the um, couple of things uh, you can, um, you know, it depends on exactly what your control level is. If you are a tenant admin, uh, you would like to use a more sophisticated application. Uh, we are lucky to have the SharePoint modernization scanner. So it's a desktop tool. Um, you can actually um, download it um, from Microsoft. Let me paste the link right here in the um, in the page, so I'm sharing it, so you can see that the the modernization scanner is a desktop app um, which you run um, on any machine. Um, basically, what I found that if you run it on a machine which is running in Azure, it takes less time. It will be faster in terms of the response time. So, I have ran it for a couple of customers, and actually, I'm going to share one of the report that I got from a customer. Uh, to make sure I, I don't show the customer name on it, but um, that report will give us an idea of how much content is there. I was surprised to see one of the reports that came from the customer. SharePoint is being used for five or six years, uh, especially SharePoint Online. And actually, uh, nobody knows how deep that, uh, how many workflows were there. And I'll actually show you a live example. So what you do is you basically run the tool. It is a desktop app. Uh, it gives you multiple ways of authentication. Uh, you can run this tool if you are only a site collection admin. But if you, of course, if you are a site, uh, if you are a you know tenant admin, you can also run it. Uh, if you are not a tenant admin, you can still run it by using the app ID and app password. So you can get an Azure AD, AD app uh, and get the SharePoint, um, you know, read all sites or uh, read and write all sites uh, permission and then use the app uh, password uh, to actually collect the information. So there are multiple ways that you can do that. You can also authenticate through a certificate. So whatever is the most, um, you know, something that's feasible to you, you can use the tool and actually run it. So once you um, run the tool, uh, it will give you a step-by-step -step guide. There's not too complicated step. You can, even if you have MFA, it will still run. Uh, once you uh, choose, do the authentication part it will ask you to select the sites uh, so uh, you can select one site or you can select all the sites um, in my case i ran it for all the tenant and uh, one of the customer i had was uh, had around sixty thousand sites um, and i am not going to show you but the other customer i had had twenty one thousand site collections okay. and i'm going to show that report to that's, you that's pretty big uh, that, yes it's, it's pretty big it took 11 hours i took i think i spent around 20 um, 20 or 15, uh, I don't remember exact, but I choose around 15 threads and I ran it. So, um, and it took around 11 hours to actually finish all the reports. I see some errors as well, but I think that's pretty, 
common. We can we can actually uh, ignore that. Uh, but I will review it. Um, I was running it over the weekend, so on Monday, on mo uh, morning in the morning, I will actually look at in details. So what you do is basically this is the screen where it should be. You can select uh, check everything, or you can actually choose classic workflow usage from here. And if you choose classic workflow usage and click next, actually uh, it will collect all the information about the well, the workflow. So in the meantime, and it takes time, it's actually a console app, it runs to show you the updates. So, you know, you can actually sit and watch exactly what it's doing. Um, and and uh, I saw it pretty, you know, it's a pretty verbose in terms of what it exactly it's doing. So um, in the meantime, let me go ahead and uh, open that file safely. Um, and let me just, Where is the workflow files or right how? So uh, when when the report fit, then then the tool finishes, it outputs around ten CSVs, and based on the selection. So I ran it for everything because we are also working on the modernization project. Uh, but uh, there will be ten CSVs and ten Excel files, and okay. Excel files will have the charts and graphs. So I'm opening the. Uh, I think uh, Jay, I will add. I mean, you can you can open it in the meantime. I will you know uh, you know. Uh, Talk about the tool itself. You know what it can also give us. So, sure. like, it can give us the distribution of the legacy workflows across mm -hmm. 2010. All right, and uh, it gives the distribution of the built-in and the, and the custom workflow usage. Uh, it also can give us the Power Automate upgrade uh, upgradeability score. Right, it tells us that which action can be upgraded. So, I think that report, this tool is going to be very helpful in finding that information. Uh, oh. On you know what it can be converted into into power automated using you know flow action. All right. This will really help people to convert their uh, their 2010 um, workflows into flow. But you can also it's not limited to this tool. If somehow uh, I have seen that there's there can be pushback as well. And some companies saying oh you know yeah it's a Microsoft tool but let's not run it. It might affect our performance um, of the of the tenant. Better to do it over the weekend. Let's mm -hmm. say if you don't if the, there is a um, there is a pushback. You can actually use uh, some some PowerShell tool. You can use CSOM, and using CSOM, you can actually get the workflow um, workflows from SharePoint Online. So you you're not limited to that, but of course um, you will not get these reports. So okay. um, let me just unshare and share the Excel file uh, on the screen. So uh, let me know when you see it. Yep, I can see it. All right, so this is a report of an actual customer. Um, and this report shows that uh, there are two different versions of SharePoint workflow, uh, 2010 and 2013. Uh, and there is some up upgradability percentage on the right. But you know, there are some slices on top. We can go through them. But the most important thing is that um, the numbers. So um, I, I can see that there are around 1,037 workflows that can be migrated to Microsoft Flow. So I assume these are out of the box workflows mostly. Um, but in terms of the numbers that you're seeing that on this tenant, there are um, 750 2010 workflows. And, um, and then on the other hand, there are 685 SharePoint 2013 style workflows. Uh, you know, not, there are not around 1,000, 1,000, you know, 300 workflows um, on 20,000 sites. Uh, it, it's a higher number, but you know that uh, you know finding and finding them and actually seeing which are active, which are not, will be a little bit of um, work. Um, on the right, there is a list of. Um, let me if I scroll to the right, these are the some of the workflows. If I scroll down, you can see that um, some names show that it's they are being actively used uh, because they are saying approval and archive project and and some of the you know insert. I see some of them are delete related issues uh, with some unique grid in there. Um, and if I scroll down a little bit faster, you can see that VCCF workflow, calendar, daily reminder, blah, blah, blah. So, it's, you know, these are all looks like actual workflows. Uh, we'll go into that. Um, but if you see that uh, most of the workflows uh, from these 1300 workflows, or in fact 1400, uh, are list workflows. So they were created uh, on top of lists. And on the bottom, these are some of the workflows which have been modified in last year. So this number is shows that 
these workflows are kind of active. So in, in the quarter two of 2019, uh, we saw that number like 161 workflows were modified. It means people are using either SharePoint Designer or the out of the box workflow page uh, and basically adding or removing uh, approvals, approvers or making changes to the actual workflow. But then this year, you can see the number goes like double. It means that this is the time, this is the COVID time, I guess. People went in, enabled approvals, um, and basically shows that number are still there. On the bottom, it says the subscriptions. Um, I think it's, it's something that workflow has definition template, possibly the workflow associated with SharePoint object. Uh, non out of the box are not associated uh, in this report. So, you know, show that most of them have a subscription or association with the list. And these show that yeah, are there any disabled workflows? So, 1300 workflows are enabled. And if I scroll down, it shows that is workflow uh, is out of the box workflow. So, good news is that this standard have 1175 out of the box workflows. So it means that you know, good. It's good news uh, that we have, let's say, around thousand of them are using simple approvals. But mm -hmm. still, it's a. Um, we need to find a way of converting them to a, another uh, Microsoft Flow or Power uh, 2013, which will be a challenge. Um, and and then restrictions. Um, SharePoint workflow might be restricted to only a user or list on the site. Um, so it seems like, kind of. There's only one for list, and then there's not restricted at all. So this is the report that I got uh, for, and I was actually about to talk um, to the customer about this, and then we'll start our next project where we will be, uh, you know, actually discussing what workflows need to be migrated, where we, how will we start, um, and you know, they, and start thinking about where should we go. So any question on this? I think this is pretty good report. I mean, it's, yeah, it, it gives a lot of insight yes. on what so, needs to be done, where you need to start. People need to start looking at them. So yeah, it's it's a good starting point, I guess. That yeah. you can go and tell. You know, I will be. Um, we have twenty ten workflows, but now when we take this picture and uh, show it in the slide, everybody will say yes. Now we'll, they will understand that uh, there will be some impact to the business if they don't start talking about it now. I think this is something that. If, um, if I run it for the customer who has 70,000 site collections, some of them really large customer, and the workflow usage is higher, um, you know, I think that it deserves to be an enterprise-wide notification saying, hey, if you are using 2010 workflow uh, for approval or flex signature, or maybe a custom one, please reach out to the IT team or the SharePoint support team and think about migrating. So. The other challenge that um, the tool, the, this, the scanner, is basically a tool that tells us how near you are from the SharePoint modern look and feel. So with some customers saying, hey, you know, we were using this classic UI because we had a 2010 workflow and we don't want to go away. And I heard it. I, I heard three days ago, somebody came and said, I am so much used to the classic UI because I don't find it any value of going to the modern. And this is where I tell them that there is there are some advantages. And I as soon as I start to explain the the difference in and advantages, the, the you know the person just stopped and said, I think now my whole perception has changed. Yes, let me see if I can convert it back to the modern for a couple of days and see the impact. So the thing where the person was a little bit skeptical saying, you know, I have some conditional formatting on the list. Uh, how will you do that? And I just showed them how to do column formatting. And I said, oh, look, there is a sample on Microsoft. You can copy that sample. It has these values in JSON. You can just change them a little bit uh, and you will have an even nicer look and feel. So not you know, going away from our main topic, but uh, modernization scanner does show you that information and you can use that to actually um, um, you know, collect all the information. But the final thing, that modernization scanner also give you a report about InfoPath. It will tell you how many InfoPath forms you have used. So um, if you have so InfoPath does it, forms, does, it, does this report tell us like what InfoPath, you know, what controls they're using that can be converted into into Power Apps, or does it give that detail information? Exactly. Or? 
Yes, it exactly. I, I'm not going to share it because I haven't looked at it myself and I don't okay. know how much information exposed there. So I will check it. Maybe another topic of um, maybe we can invite somebody from our, uh, you know, uh, Power App community and show them and, you know, let them explain uh, rather than, you know, I'm not huge into Power Apps, but um, but still um, it's uh, it will be great to have somebody who knows um, you know, who have more done more projects and converting us uh, InfoPath or custom apps to Power Apps. I think then, so uh, to summarize, so if everybody, you know, who, who's looking, who knows that, that the, you know, SharePoint 2010 workflows are getting retirement and they need a starting point, uh, I think this is going to be the starting point. Absolutely, yes. They need to submit the report, they need to really know what they have in their tenant, you know, how many workflows are there, how many are active, and what is the usability before they even dump jump in to start converting those workflows, then you really need to know the logistics, the statistics, you know, of, of how it's being used. I think um, we should we should start from the annoyance. So I would say I will come to this sheet and I click on 0% <laughs> and I'll say, you know, tell me the workflow that's not going to migrate. And I will reach out to those folks first because I think they will be the one with the most angry face <laughs> saying, oh, you know, we have done this uh, over the years. It was working all the time and now you decided. So I would say zero or minus one or 25% and, you know, identify those sites and reach out to those guys because they are the ones uh, who will be, um, you know, who might come back with with more serious uh, type of feedback. So that's, that's one thing. But if I go back now, let me, for anybody, you know, who knows the, uh, the SharePoint workflow piece, uh, you know that we, uh, the SharePoint uh, workflows were enabled in, of course, in on-prem, but in if you want to enable the 2013, uh, 2010 workflow in SharePoint Online, you have to enable the feature. So uh, let me share again. And where is the, I want to show the, All right, so you see the my SharePoint site. So this is a class. Uh, this is not a. This is a modern site. So I'll switch it to more classic version of my site. So this is the the classic SharePoint. If I come back here and I click on site settings, and there was a site collection features, and right in the bottom, there was workflow. So these are the aggregated set of out of the box workflows provided by SharePoint, and you can see that the feature is deactivated. So if I go to the um, let's say if I go to any list, um, let's say if I click on docs with metadata and I go to the library settings, I can actually go to workflow page or workflow settings page, and then I can add a workflow. So when I choose add a workflow, I, I can see that um, I have 2010 workflow and 2013 workflow. So you can see that approval workflow, collect feedback and collect signature and uh, other workflows are there and they're pretty easy to set up so let, let's go ahead and set up the approval workflow i'll say approval and uh, you know this is not uh ab this is abc of workflows uh, you can choose workflow to start automatically uh, this is again a little bit of decision making um you know what type of things you will use when you talk about uh sharepoint so there is a, a microsoft article uh, that we you know you can use docs or microsoft.com of course for you know exactly what is the uh, what are the things that match the 2010 workflow in 2013 or uh, Microsoft Power Automate? So we'll we'll talk about it later, but for now I'll leave it for automatic uh, for manual start. So the, this is where you add the assign to you. You know I can assign it to um, you know let's say Abzal. On the other hand, I have his account here, so I can add it. I can add another stage, or I can add you know myself. So once you uh, type your name, it will actually um, let me correct it. And I'll say right here and then you can enter the request. So please approve. So you can see that this is the the basic functionality. You can have the due date, uh, you can have duration, uh, you can have CC in there and then you can decide what to do if approval is rejected uh, by part participant or if, if document is rejected, I want to stop the workflow automatically. And plus, you can enable the content approval. So the content approval has its own option in uh, on the site on the list level. So you can enable that, or you can use this one, this workflow to control it. For now, I'll just click save. 
So now workflow is being added, has been added. So the the problem with this is now that now you can start the workflow from um, from the list. Uh, I think you know you can just go to the same item, and it's been some time that we basically tell people to do that. Click on it, leaves, then again, and you can see that approval is here. You can click on it and basically click start. At the same time, you can change it. So the the option to do this. Uh, no, no, let's talk about it now. One thing that people will ask you that, hey, you know, uh, our company has not moved on to um, Power Automate and Flow uh, or Power Apps. I have heard it from a really, really large customer we work with told me, uh, you know, we, we built a form using Power Automate, uh, so Power Apps, and then we try to launch it uh, so that people use it. They got the hey, you know, you don't have license, use a trial account. So we went back to IT and the response was that we haven't rolled it out. So there might be a scenario where we'll say, hey, you know, you are not, um, we are not going to launch it yet. Mm -hmm. So what to do? So yes, we have SharePoint 2013 workflow. Can we have an approval workflow in SharePoint 2013? So technically, there's no out-of-the-box approval in 2013. Uh, we have only a custom workflow uh, which, we, which we can start. So it's 11.34. So let's jump in quickly and show you one common example. So what I will do is I will open SharePoint Designer. So while we are open, while I open SharePoint Designer, one, one thing, what will happen to SharePoint Designer? If once Microsoft turns off the workflows, they, they should not appear. <laughs> so, all right. So the <laughs> workflow tab will still appear. Bad news. Okay. I mean, that will be uh, there. Though. Yeah. So it's workflow tab will be there, um, and you will be able to, um, uh, you will be able to actually uh, click on new workflow. Again, a bad news, but it it is the same. Uh, and then you will get an error message. You'll say, hey, you know, workflow creation has been disabled on this tenant. Um, so. This is the same scenario which you would currently get when you click on um, the, when you try to create a new custom form. So you know that custom forms, uh, the Microsoft, uh, the SharePoint designer based custom forms has been disabled a couple of months ago. And the customer came to me um, and logged an issue and said, you know, I have been using custom forms for some time now, when I click on this, I get an error message. Um, you know, and and again, it's end user. They don't know the details. Um, it was not not they were not notified, so they just came back and said, "Oh, I'm getting an error message." And I looked at it and I sent that article saying, "Hey, this is not supported anymore. You can't do that." So same kind of message will come, and I think this is where we have to make sure that our uh, users are aware that what will happen when they uh, click on share uh, workflows. But the thing is that this is where we have to tell them, hey, SharePoint Designer is not there for you. Now go to app the flow.microsoft.com and you have to create the flow now. So we, we can do that, but let me share. And we can see that if, if in the next five to 10 minutes, if we can create a, a basic workflow and in, in SharePoint Designer. So I click on workflows and I will just come here and say new list. And I can click on the the same list talk start with metadata, and I can give it um, SharePoint 2013 approval. And I'll choose a type again. Right now you have 2010; it will go away eventually. But you know, and, and while it's loading, the SharePoint designer will continue to work with SharePoint 2010 um, if somebody still have it, or and SharePoint 2013, 2016, 2019 because it is the tool for customizing SharePoint um, in on-prem world. So it, it, the workflow will still be there. This change only applies to SharePoint Online. So the first thing on this stage, I'll change it to the um, stage, I'll say approval stage. And then uh, the first thing I'll do is uh, I'll handle the, um, the due date. So I'll create a new variable. So I'll call it the uh, due date and I'll choose a type date. And then I'll click OK, and eventually I'll just say 
um, add time to the date. So I'll choose add one day to the date uh, and I'll choose the FX. Um, sorry, I'll choose the date. And I'll say current date, you know, today, whenever, whenever the workflow will run and output to due date. So what it will do, it will just add one day to my today's date, which is like already 7, 12, but it will be 13. So same time on 13, it will actually uh, be a due date. And next thing I'll do, I'll create a new task. So I'll say assign a task. So when you say assign a task, you will also see that, uh, you know, there is something called create a custom task process, you know. Um, you know, you can also use a task process. You know, I'm not going to explain the difference, but the difference is that task process provide additional power to you if you are, you know, if you have different layers and you want to do complicated logic or you want to add different conditions inside each state of the workflow, like when the task is assigned, when the task is updated, when the task is completed, when the task is complete, uh, closed, something like that. So it gives you more power, but for now, I'm keeping it simple, just like an approval. So somebody submitted a file, I want to get an approval, I assign him a task, and then um, I will check whether the task is completed. So here you see that we have a participant and I'll choose, let's say uh, myself and I click okay. So it doesn't, I'm not sure if it picked the right guy. <laughs> so uh, I'll say a user who created the item, which makes more sense. Let me just remove it first. All right, and I'll change the title, test, please approve, and description. So again, this is ABC of SharePoint workflows. We are not here to tell you about how the workflows are, but if you haven't done it, this maybe this will help you. Uh, but uh, I'll choose the, the, the due date to be the workflow variable, so I'll change it to due date. And then you can also apply different content uh, uh, options like email. Uh, you want to change it, like send an email when the task is overdue. All of that is there. Uh, we'll talk about it hopefully in future that how we can get this done in Microsoft Power Automate. But today is might not be the right thing. We want to keep it as simple as possible. So now when the when the approval is done, you can have the approval. But if, what if you want to check what happens? So you can use that outcome variable right we have to actually check. So I can say if, and I would say if any value equal value, and I can say uh, the value, I'll use a variable, I'll say workflow variable outcome. Outcome is actually a choice. Um, I would say choice or it's a enum, I'll say approved. So I'll choose, if it's approved, I'll say send email. And I can send an email to so let's say, um, you know, if I can find or as a create user who created the item, I want to keep it, make sure that it works. Yeah. Uh, and then I'll say uh, approval um, or approved. And I'll, I can save it for now. I'll keep it simple. You can use add a lookup to make it not nice, beautiful. If you have done it many times, you don't have to worry about it. I can click OK and now we're done. Uh, and then you can click right in the end of it um, and click on else branch, and then you can say, uh, I can actually, same way, I can copy and I can paste. And I can just click on it and I say reject it. I click OK. So this is the way that we will have to do. So if somebody has used it, um, the uh, somebody has 2010 approval, this is where you'll do one person approval or maybe a couple of people. You can assign the task to different people and then decide. So what if you have another person? What if you have another task? What do you do? You will actually copy that piece and then check it again. Um, in, in a couple of workflow that I built recently, uh, again in 2013 format, no hard feeling, uh, but same way there were three or four levels uh, because customers said, we want to see how it works in 2013 and then we'll decide whether to use the approvals in Microsoft Flow. So, uh, you know, one of the condition I did is that uh, you know, if I have another stage here, just for example, I'm not going to do it. So I'll say approval stage two, and I'll come back here and say if. So I can set the same value. I can say if value of that um, a variable outcome is proved. Sorry. Then I'll say go to stage, and I'll say stage two. 
else go to stage and the work and of the workflow. Now, in this case, you can add multiple stages in the workflow. And this is the same way you can, add, you know, unlimited stages or conditions. So I'll delete it and I'll just get rid of that as well. Now I'll delete the whole condition and say go to stage and the workflow. Oh, sorry, I'll end the workflow and I publish it. Uh, and now if I, once the workflow is published, um, it will be available there on the home page. So let me share that screen again. I hope I can share my whole screen, but it will be so wide. Mm -hmm. um, so here, if I can go back, start a workflow. So I'll click cancel in that page. Let me know when you see my screen. Mm -hmm. yep, I can see it. All right, so if I click back here, I go back to workflows. You can see that I have a SharePoint 2013 workflow. The difference is that when I clicked approval, it actually asked me to reselect some of the values if, if you want to, but with the 2013 approval, um, things are simple. Um, it just kicked it off. Um, why? Because we haven't had some of the things that we, we if you want to ask somebody something, that it has uh, the initiation parameters. We don't have any, so it just started it. You can see, still see the status. If everything is good, uh, if I go back to workflows, the workflow is running and it's saying the approval stage. If I click on it, it will definitely have a task for um, somebody. So I click on it and I click edit. This, you can see that. This is, very, this is, this is how SharePoint 2013 approval is going to look like versus the in 2010 where we have info path and, and yes it's, and it's, it looks yeah. in the diagram uh, sorry in the dialogue yeah. um and many people actually when i converted the 2010 work close to 2013 they actually came back and asked me is there a way that we can open it in in the dialogue so that i don't have to come and click edit and my response is there might be there could be a way uh, but you know we want to keep it simple we want to make sure that you use the uh, the basic functionality so I, I can you can see that due date is selected here so yes you can do that so if i click on approve the workflow is done so can we do the same in power automate we haven't talked about it but yes we can so let, let's quickly do that you know i you know might feel it's we're trying to cover all the aspects so why not flow so i'll go to flow.microsoft.com and then we'll try to create a basic flow, not complicated, same exact functionality, but in flow. So uh, in the meantime, I'll grab the name of the site and you can see that the flow is complete. And if I refresh um, and show the status is done and the item is approved. If I go back to the, uh, let me go back like this. Sorry for that, but I want to make sure that I reach the list. If I scroll to the right, uh, you can see that it's in the approval stage and it's actually complete. So now the flow is here. Let's quickly create a new flow. I'll click on create. So I'll say instant flow because the same way I want to run the flow by myself. If I click on instant flow and I'll choose uh, when for the selected item or selected file, you, you can choose whether you're running for uh, a SharePoint uh, file or you're running for a list item. For now, I think we are working on a um, let me see, is it the library? Yeah, it's a document. So we can actually choose when a selected for a selected file. I'll click create. And I'll quickly give it a name. I'll say uh, basic approval. And I'll select the name uh, of the site. So I'll choose the root site and the library. I think it's docs with metadata. Yeah. And if I want, same way, I, as I said, in the SharePoint 2010 workflow, we had initiation parameters. We have 2013, the same initiation parameters. In approval, we have input. So you can add an input and then ask the question. Uh, some of the examples I have, uh, you know, I did uh, some project where we have five questions, all required, all, you know, choose the type of approval you need, uh, choose the select the customer name or something like that. You can have that uh, predefined values that you want to ask. So now I'm not going to ask it. You can add a new step. 
and you can say that um, I'm got, going to get approval. So if you search for approval, not going into details, we can say that what type of approval you need, I'll choose start and wait for an approval. So there's an out of box action available to actually have these approvals. Correct. So you can use approval. And then there are other types of approvals, which are very, very interesting. If I choose that, you have four types of approvals. You have approve reject, where everyone must approve. Must approve yeah. Approve reject, first to respond, and custom responses. So instead of saying approve reject, you can also say ready for review, ready for approval, mm -hmm. or ready for next step. So you can ask the question based on your business logic. So for now, I'll say, you know, everyone must approve or first to, they're kind of same, but only difference is as soon as the first one rejects, the flow, uh, the flow completes. In this case, everyone must approve. It means that, uh, sorry, the first one is everyone has to approve um, to, to complete. As soon as rejection happens, uh, the workflow done. And the second one, you can assign it to five people, but as soon as first one completes it, other one, others don't have to do anything. So I'll choose everyone must approve. And then there's a trick. Um, Sometimes when you add it and you change one type to another, you will see that it's actually hide some of the columns. So be very careful about it. Uh, you know, when, you, when I change it, it doesn't show. So I click on show all. Um, so I always sometimes feel, oh, where are the columns? You know, where is the yes, true, uh, the sign to, et cetera. So it's uh, something that you have to click on um, this. If you face this problem, I think the what I do is I can actually <laughs> delete it and add it again. I add it again. tell that, you know, I don't want to get into trouble five minutes later. So approval, start and wait, and click on everyone must approve, and then choose a title. I can say, uh, please approve. And assign to, I'll choose another user like myself. All right, and I'll please approve. And I can choose from the dynamic values. I can pick the file name. And then the item link, I will choose the item URL. And in the description, I can have a description column. If I do, for now, I don't have it. So you can see that I have a limited amount of uh, pro uh, properties here. So what do you have to do if you want to get more properties? So because I'm using for the selected file, it doesn't expose all of the properties. So you have to say for the selected file, you have to use another action called get file properties. Mm -hmm. uh, so you or get file metadata. So you can get all those. Let's say we have custom columns in there. For now, I don't have anything. I click on show advanced. I want to add request or email, which can be a dynamic content like user email, the person who's running the flow. Um, I can say enable notification. Uh, and then, you know, I can, if I want to have the attachment, I can add it if I do. But mm -hmm. remember, for attachment, you have to make sure you have the attachment. Like we have the selected file, of course, so we can use it. So for now, our basic approval is there. We can click save. But we haven't uh, done anything like, you know, what if the workflow approve? If it approves, I want to be notified. So you can add a new step and say condition and click add. In the condition, Sorry, it's here. So in the condition I can, I have to have the outcome variable. So outcome can be a little tricky. Um, outcome, outcome can be one value or multiple values. So you can have the outcome from five people or one people, one person. So remember, uh, this is where you have to decide exactly how you want to do that. So Microsoft Flow will help you with for that. If you have multiple outcomes, um, it will automatically add a loop on it. So your as soon as you add the outcome variable, it will automatically add the uh, for each on top of it. And you, you can then decide exactly what to do. So I'll say approved. And then you can say send an email. And you can choose email v2. And you can send an email to the of course, a uh, you know response approval email or user email. Right now, I don't have the created by because I didn't use it. So again, and maybe another time, I'll want to try to make it as simple as possible. So for the selected file to the user, I'll say your item has been approved. 
and you can say you can paste the same message here. Um, and the same way, if you want it there, you can copy to clipboard and come back here, and I can say from clipboard, paste it, and then expand it again, and then say your item has been rejected. And update both. And this is how you will basically create a basic approval. Um, you know, that's, I'm not going into any detail. There's not, um, you know, a, a, pro, um, a flow in, you know, detailed depth training. It's just, mm -hmm. I showed you all the options that uh, if your environment is not ready for uh, Microsoft Flow or Power Out event, which is very low pro probability, uh, you can use 2013 workflow. Oh, mm -hmm. And if you, if you're ready for flow, basically, this is how you will develop it using um, Power Automate. I mean, so, yeah. go ahead. I talked no, a I lot. Was, uh, yeah, <laughs> that was really, pretty, pretty, pretty robust. Uh, I think, yeah, I think uh, it's something, there will be obviously an impact. I mean, there will be a change of the way we were seeing the approval previously. Like uh, in my cases that users were actually had um, all the information were on the one form for the approver to really go and see it. I mean, I see that in 2013, uh, basically there is, um, when you look at the task form, you really don't have, a, it doesn't show if it's a, you know, item related link there. So, but the way you will do is you actually will have to follow through the email where you click on the document, you view mm -hmm. it and then go to task form. Uh, you know, in the same way, you know, when you have this uh, flow, obviously there will be a change of, of way you were, you know, looking at things and improving it. So I think yeah, it's there, but, uh, but this is more gonna be much more simple way of yep. doing, I, I mean, I personally think flow should be the way to go because yep. everything is moving to flow and it's everything is all about power automate. So, uh, and I think that that should be the way they, people use it. Yeah, you have to, you have to make a decision, you know, what, what, how the workflow is working right now and how the user wants to run. Uh, like one of the requirements, which I, you know, that I get, you know, we, not many, I have not seen people running workflows when an item is created or when an item is modified. I see most workflows are being started manually, at least for my customers. There are only few workflows that runs automatically and because I think modifications are quite common. People modify things much, much more often. So um, in that case, the, um, the for the selected record or for the selected item or for the selected um, file is the most common way of doing it. Um, one customer came to me and said, you know, I like this way of clicking the file, the file here and say, you know, power automate, but you can see that I am using a smaller window for my video, which is, which look, which may look pretty, um, you know, kind of, um, smaller, but if I expand it a little bit, um, you can see that the power automate button is right here. So if you're, if you're using minimized version, power automate goes right here. So if you select this, um, you see Power Automate is gone now. <laughs> so you have to click on this, then Power Automate, Automate, and then choose basic approval. And once you click on it, you can actually see the dialogue. So one customer said, is there a way actually I can do it without uh, clicking three times? So there is, yes, there is. So you can use uh, actually the, uh, the column formatting. There is a column formatting to start a flow sample. Um, column formatting, start a flow. I want to make sure that everybody who have seen it um, uh, have, you know, at least have a sample. So I click cancel. This is how you start the flow. So we, if you go back here and we can play with it, the last thing I can say, a uh, single column, and I can say start flow. And you can just click save. And in the, and I grab that format from somewhere on the internet, which is mostly GitHub. And I can come back. And I can say start a flow, column settings, format this column, oh, click here, and you can say advanced mode and paste it. So in this uh, page, the only thing you need to do is change the, the text or the what do you want to do, like here mark as shipped. I'll say start basic approval, and you can click preview. You can see the message right there, start basic approval. But the only thing, next thing you need to change is the ID of the flow. So if you click on the ID here, um, you can actually grab the, the ID of the flow, which from, from the URL, or basically if I click back, let me see if I click save. And if I click back, 
right here, there's a flow ID. You know, so you can grab that ID from here, go back to your browser and paste it. So write carefully, don't overwrite any values, and you click save. Uh, or you say, um, let me remove paste it because you can see what happened. The, the text, the, the area is small, so I can click save and then I can close it. Now you see that the view is there, but I, if I scroll it and click on it, it will actually kick off the same flow. So you can do it like this as well. Now, <laughs> it never ends. The story never ends, actually. Uh, now, I did this, and I clicked continue, and then the customer came back and said, hey, you know, I know that I can start a flow, but what if I started a flow already? So what happened is that I added another column and used up create a hyperlink. So basically, when a flow is started, it adds a, the value existing flow, and it shows that the hyperlink that I generate from the flow, it keeps updating the record. So when you click on the, the, the flow, it actually takes you to the, uh, the flow page. And this is where they can see exactly where the flow is. Um, and this is mostly for admins, but you know, you, the flow is accessible to everyone who has access to it. So that's a couple of trips. Um, <laughs> because, I think we, can do that. we can do that in some other video. I think the video is yeah, already sure. on. So you I know. think we can, you know, we can. But can in the end, uh, options are there, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to start looking at it right now. We have four months to go unless Microsoft changed something, but um, we have all the options and. Um, I think we can lay out all these options, you know, one by one, the different series of, you know, of, of videos of this, you know, meeting, and then from there, uh, you know, we will have that information as well, and we will learn it as we mm -hmm. all are trying to convert our uh, 2010 workflows into Flow. So I yep. think that, you know, we can end so the call. I hope, um, you know, this discussion is kind of open. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe next time I'll let you drive it, uh, the demo, rather than me sure. doing it. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I sure. yeah. Um, you know, but maybe uh, we have, we have we must pick up another important thing that happened in the Office 365 space. Maybe we talk about Microsoft Teams. Uh, you know, pick up a cool feature. Um, another idea I had was to think, you know, discuss various admin center functionality for Microsoft Teams and see how it impacts. Like, you know, we we share the whole screen and see when we change the setting, how does it impact? But you know, there are many ideas. Things okay. we will do that. So sure. all right. Yeah. So with Thank that, you. thank you very much, and uh, hopefully we'll 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 meet again, and we'll just right. and. Take care. All right. Take care. Thank you. Bye.